Although the prisoners at Wabash have been sentenced for crimes, ranging from burglary to murder, there are some things they hold in common. Many come from the same cities, and in some cases, the same family. I think other people in society, and especially around my county and stuff, probably think of me as, you know what I mean, a cold blood murderer or whatever. But, uh, you know, if they knew me or got a chance to talk to me, they'd know different. My brother, I just hope he forgives me and stuff too, so. We've always been pretty close. Uh, he's really a quiet person, stays himself. He usually gets along with everybody. Just draws and writes a lot. That's really all he does. Two years ago, brothers Blade and Benny Reed were sentenced to Wabash for a burglary that went horribly awry. Even though both boys were originally placed in the Wabash Youth Unit, they have always been kept separate. Once Benny turned 18, he moved into the adult population at Wabash, while Blade remains in the youth unit. We don't see each other because he's in the juvenile dorm. And I think about him every once in a while, you know what I mean? Wonder how he's doing, hoping he's staying out of trouble and stuff, so. The Reed brothers have been trying for two years to get a face-to-face -face meeting, but kids under the age of 18 at Wabash must be kept separate from the adult population, so a visit is all but impossible. At times, it's difficult, but it really ain't nothing we can do to change it. Besides, so stay out of trouble and hope they give us a visit. The Reed brothers' life in prison could not be more different than their rural upbringing in the hills of Brown County, Indiana. It's all country out there. I spent most of my time outdoors, just fishing, hunting. I usually stayed to myself, other than my family. Always been a shy person, so. Honestly, I wouldn't think I would have been here because I just didn't ever think of him waving a 15 year old. I don't know, I try not to think about it. Blade Reed was just 13 years old when he and his 16 year old brother rode their bikes to a neighbor's house intending to steal beer. According to police reports, Benny pulled out a gun after entering the victim's home. The victim had a gun of his own and fired on Benny, hitting him in the arm. Benny shot back, killing the 84-year-old man. He then directed Blade to cut his wife's throat. She lived, but no one's life would ever be the same. Both Blade and Benny were waived to adult court. Benny pled guilty to murder and aggravated battery. He was sentenced to 60 years. Blade's case was more complicated. Court records revealed Blade was the victim of physical and sexual abuse when he was an infant. Psychiatric reports concluded Blade's mental maturity was that of a 10-year-old. After months of highly charged hearings, Blade pled guilty to robbery resulting in serious injury and one juvenile account of aggravated battery. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Neither boy had ever had a brush with the law prior to the crime. First of all, Blade, if you could just tell us your name and your age and what facility you're in. Uh, Blade Reed, uh, 15, and Wabash Valley Correctional Facility. Is it at all hard for you to believe, Blade, that here you are only 15 years old and you're in a facility like this? Well, how, how would you explain that to people? What's it like? I, honestly, I wouldn't think I would have been here because I just didn't ever think of them waving a 15 year old. I don't know, it's really hard to explain. Just, I don't know. Was that a scary day in court when you found out that they were waving you to an adult facility? Uh, they actually sent the waiver through the computer. So I didn't go to court for the waiver. So do, do you remember when you found out you were waived? Who, who told you and how did that go? Uh, uh, I think it was the juvenile director told me. And I, uh, it really didn't. I already knew I had a chance of getting waived, so it didn't really change how I felt or anything, you know. I knew I was facing more time, but other than that, it just, Built the same. Did you 
feel sad or scared or what? How would you describe how you felt? Uh, I don't know, I was a little scared because, I mean, mostly just over time. I, I knew I was going to do some time over and stuff. So it was, I don't know, just mainly scared. Did you already know that your brother was going to be coming here by the time you found out, or did you guys find out at the same time? Uh, nah, he, he automatically got waved over to the dark court. And he got sentenced about five or six months before I did, so he, I already knew he was going to be here. Have you and Benny always been close? Are you really close brothers? Yeah. We've always been pretty close. So tell us about your brother. What's your brother like? Uh, he's really a quiet person stays himself he usually gets along with everybody it's draws and writes a lot it's really all he does now do you do you and Benny since you're both here in the same place at, at Wabash do you ever get a chance to see each other or talk talk to me about whether or not you get to see him uh other than a visit they let us have a couple months back. That's the only time I've seen him in the two years we've been down. I seen him through the doors and stuff on the county, but other than that, I ain't seen him talk to him. So ever since you guys were arrested and, and were placed here, you've only seen him once in two years? Uh, it's, it's about two and a half years, actually. Yeah, it's about... How, how hard is that, not being able to see your brother? Uh, I mean, at times it's difficult, but it really ain't nothing we can do to change it. Besides, so stay out of trouble and hope they give us a visit. But other than that, yeah. Do you get any visits from anyone else, anyone in your family? Uh, my mom, dad, my sister come and visit me. Do they visit very often, or? Uh, usually at least once a month or so. That's good considering it's a two and a half hour drive up here. Yeah, you're, you're from a small town, aren't you? Yeah. Tell me about the town that you're from, what it's like back home. Uh, it's really just, it's just all county, there ain't, it's all country out there. Ain't, ain't really, ain't much correspondence. We're all spread out and stuff. We just, mainly just stay in the family and stuff. So how, um, how's your mom and your dad and your sister when they come to visit you, how are they doing? Ah, uh, they, they doing better now. I mean, at first it was hard on them too, but that's just normal. So. Yeah, it's better now. So how would you describe being in an adult maximum security prison to people on the outside who have no idea what it's like inside a place like this? It's hard, but you really just got, I mean, you can't really adjust to it, but you got to try and do the best you can. I mean, ain't no freedom. You don't get to choose what you wear, eat, none of that stuff. They, Everything everybody wears and eats the same stuff. You just ain't got no freedom. You got that's probably the hardest thing is freedom. Do you think a lot about the things you're missing as a young kid? You haven't learned to drive yet or any of those things? Do you think about those things? Uh, I, I I think about my family a lot, but other than that stuff I really don't think about none of that makes it easier just to forget it, just cope with it. I think that that's what a lot of other people would think is, you know, how how do you 
like when you go to bed at night, how do you um, kind of get through all of this? You just kind of talk yourself into making the best of it? It's really all you can do. What would you want people on the outside to, to know about you that, that maybe they don't know about you? Because they've only heard about you or read about you. What would you want them to know? First of all, I really, I really ain't. It's my first time ever being in trouble. Juvenile or dot court. I really just stay to myself. And stay out of trouble and stuff. You want people to know you're not a bad kid? Yeah. I, I mean, I made my mistakes, but that's life. Everybody does it. So. Do you feel like maybe things that you went through when you're younger? I know um, you, you had some hard times before you were adopted, right? Yeah, went through several different families and stuff, but I don't know. I, I don't really think that affected what we did or none of that. Do you, do you even re really remember that night, or is it almost like you? Sort of. We've had a lot of kids tell us before when, the, when they do things like that that it's almost like they, they black out or they... Hang on one second, Blade. Sorry. Yeah, Little camera malfunction. Camera audio malfunction. Audio malfunction. Uh, Those batteries. You guys don't have a TV, huh? Oh, uh, got one coming next. You got month. one coming? Good. I forget your bunkie's name again. Bronson. Bronson, that's it. I kept thinking Brian. Okay. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, do, you, do you ever. Like, can you even remember that night, or is it all just sort of a blur? Or? Nah, I still remember it. That hard? Well, first it was, but just like everything else, you just gotta work with it. Did the court give you a chance at all to say anything to the family or anything like that? Yeah, they really wasn't nothing I could say besides sorry and stuff, but that don't change fact, but, you know. So, you're 15, and they, what sentence did they give you? Uh, 30, do 15. So they gave you a 30-year sentence of which you would serve 15 years. Yeah. And then, do you know if there's a possibility for you to get out before that? Uh, well, with time cuts, I can get down to about nine years. But other than that, unless I modify it out, I gotta do nine years automatically. So let's see, you would be 24 then if you got out in nine years. Yeah. Do you even let yourself think about that? About the fact that you'll be locked up nine more years, or? Oh. Uh, I mean, I, I think about it, but right now there's so many other possibilities. So I just try to look at the more positive ones. You know, we just followed, two new kids just moved into this unit a little bit ago, and two other guys moved out. What's it like for you watching new kids come into this unit? How do you feel about that? Well, I, I honestly can't answer that one. It's just... 
I'll do with them the same way I do everybody else. I talk to them as I do. Just normal people. Just... And, and what's it like seeing guys leave? Um, uh, let's see. Let me think. Uh, Michael just left. And um, I'm drawing a blank on Rankin left. Is, is it hard at all to see kids go and you know that you're still here? Not really, because I just look at it as a better opportunity for them to get into school and stuff. Cause the only thing you can get over here is GD. I'd rather see them go, get those time cuts and stuff, and be locked up over here. So. Now, are you working on your GED? Uh, I'm working on it, but I can't get it until I'm 17, so I'm just studying for it right now. So what's it like living in a cell this size, you know, with a roommate who, you know, when you first got here, you didn't know who you were going to room with. Explain what that's like to people who've never seen a cell like this. Well, in most cases, it's kind of difficult because you don't know whether you're going to get along with that person or it's just ain't much space. I don't know. It's, in my case, though, I already knew this dude before we came over here together, so. My cell in me. So. so you guys get along pretty well? Yeah. That's good. So. If you could change anything right now, if you could turn back time, start all over again, how would you want your life to be? Other than that incident that got us in here, I'd still be doing the same stuff I was doing. So I wouldn't change it none. So what were you like before all this happened? If we would have come down to Brown County to hang out with you for a while, what, what would we have seen? What were you like? I, I spent most of my time outdoors just fishing, hunting, playing football and stuff, just normal stuff that everybody does, but I usually stay to myself, other than my family. I didn't associate with their people and stuff. I, just, I don't know. I've always been a shy person, so I just, I stay to myself. Is it almost impossible for you to believe this is where you are and this is what life is like right now? Yeah, it's, I think at first it hits anybody kind of hard. But then you think back to some of the things you said or did, and just, you knew the chances you were taking, so it's, it's just, I don't know, I try not to think about it. Cause I can't change it, just got learn from my mistakes and go off that. So tomorrow you actually get to have a visit with your brother in the morning. That's kind of a good surprise for you, is it? Yeah. I, I tried to get a visit while back with him. They gave me one, but ever since they just been pushing it aside, so yes. Kind of a relief. So, how do you think you're going to feel when you see him? It's been a little while, hasn't it? Uh, I probably it's been a while, but I probably feel the same way I feel right now. I mean, I'm gonna be happy, but other than that, ain't gonna change my feelings any. You know, I I think Benny feels responsible for you being here. Do you blame him for anything for being here? Nah. I really can't. I mean, it was just my much, as much my decision to go to the place as it was his. But the 
If we wouldn't hurt nobody, we wouldn't be here right now. So. So no matter what, he's your brother and you love your brother. Uh, that, this ain't gonna change us yet. Yeah, we. It's just can't change it. So. It was, it was just my much my fault. It was his. So. I don't know. Do you think about the day when you'll both be out and be free again? Do you ever think about that day? Uh, not really. I mean. I think about when I get out a lot, but he's got a little bit more time than me, so I just look at it. I get out. I'm gonna help him as long as I can, but after that, I don't know. I don't really think about it too much. So if we were to come back and visit you, say, in three or four years, you'd be 18 or 19, how do you think you'll be at that time? What do you think we'll see if we come back and see you in another three or four years? Well, I'll, I'll still be the same, probably. Hopefully have my GED and be heading out of here. So, other than now. Is there anything else you'd like to say that you'd want people to know about how you're doing or how you're feeling? No, I mean, like I said, I'm just going to cope with it, get my education while I'm in here, hopefully get out early when I'm supposed to, get a good job and live on from that. I mean. Ain't much you can do about it. Just stay out of trouble and get your education. What would you want people on the outside to know about you? Because I know your case became a high profile case. And so all people know about you, hopefully until now, when they can actually hear from you directly, all people know about you is what they've read about you in the paper. Right. So what do you think people think of you on the outside versus who you really think you are? Um, first thing I think is I think they probably think, you know what I mean, I was a big troublemaker as a kid, you know what I mean, going out robbing all the time and like some, you know what I mean, children are raised and stuff in cities and stuff, but out in the country, you know what I mean, uh, you was pretty much secluded by yourself and there wasn't a lot of criminal activity or influence around you or nothing, so. So you think they thought you were like a constant menace and probably <laughs> but you never really were that. No. And and after the news hit, um, I mean do they do you think that people look at you as some cold blooded killer or what do you think um, that they think of you? It's hard to say, uh, I mean the people of course that know me know different, but uh, I think other people in society and especially around my county and stuff probably think of me as, you know what I mean, a cold blood murderer or whatever. But, uh, you know, if they knew me or whatever, or got a chance to talk to me, they'd know different. And uh, I'm just pretty laid back, you know what I mean? I try not to get any fights or anything, and pretty much try to stick to myself, you know what I mean? Is there anything um, that, that you would want anybody involved with your case to know? I mean, did you, did you ever have a chance to say you were sorry to anyone or, or be offered that opportunity? Um, I was offered the opportunity in my county during my, uh, during my sentencing. I was allowed to read a, a uh, statement. statement to the victims and society and stuff. But I believe it wasn't accepted. I'm not sure how it worked, but the lawyer or uh, the uh, prosecutor, somebody said like that he waived it or something. So I don't know how that works. but. Yeah, I'd just like the uh, victims of the family to know that I am sorry. And if I could take that back, I would take it back. And it was nothing personal, you know what I mean? It was just stupid kid making stupid mistakes, you know what I mean? And uh, then my family and my community, I'd like to say thank you to all, or uh, thank you. Uh, sorry to all them and stuff. And uh, my brother, I just hope he forgives me and stuff too, so. Is this something that um, 
you go to bed with every night and wrestle with every night in your mind trying to um, get through it? No, I wouldn't say every night. I mean, I'll have my nights throughout the week or whatever, you know, that I'll be thinking about mainly the time, how much time there is over my head and stuff, so. And uh, just about what things could have changed or whatever. Or, and I mainly think about things that I didn't do that I wish I'd have done, you know what I mean? Something that I might have been too afraid to attempt or go out there and just put myself forward to do, you know what I mean? So you can't really point to anything in your past that would have made you end up doing what you did that night? Um, I don't know, I'm sure every family's got their hardships and stuff. Like me and my brother and my sister, we was put through several foster families and stuff. And, you know, I mean, my, uh, my mom and dad, they was both arrested and we was taken from them by Child Protective Services and stuff as a young kid and stuff. And, uh, I don't know, that might have led something on though. I saw child therapist stuff as a child, me and my brother and my sister did. But uh, we was adopted into a pretty good family, you know what I mean? So, so you're all three adopted? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. So how old, do you know how old you were when you were adopted? Was it um, a baby? Or? No, I was, think I was about eight years old, I was. And uh, my brother, Blake, he was four years old. And then my sister, she was, uh, I think, about six, seven. So you were the three biological right. uh, children. And you were all three adopted by your family now, your mom and, and dad that you have now? Um, yeah. And then they, did they end up, so you were in foster care up until you were adopted, or you were adopted and then you were in foster care after that? Um, no, we was in foster care. We went through several houses first. Then we went, was, went to the foster family that we're certain, or, uh, currently was adopted by. Okay. And we stayed with them for so long and, you know, got a fill of things and decided, we had the decision to decide if we wanted to be adopted by them okay. in court. And we all three agreed to be adopted. Uh, yeah, my uh, real dad, he has, I have two step, or I have a stepbrother and a stepsister, and love my mom's side, there ain't nothing, I don't think she has any children. And I hadn't talked to my real mom or uh, dad for 10 years while I was adopted. Don't Yeah, because my mom was addicted real bad to drugs and stuff. And, We were just talking about the fact that you were adopted. So in your early years, all the way up until about age eight, you actually saw probably a lot as a child because your your biological, at least mom, you said, right? Right. Had some drug issues? Right? Yeah, she had uh, drug issues. I'm not sure which ones because we were young at the time. But uh, it was enough to affect. And uh, I know we had never had no food in the house or nothing and, you know, dirty clothes and stuff. We grew up in a... Bloomington. As a, as a child, I was born in Bloomington. And uh, yeah, so it was enough to get notice of Child Protective Services, and they came and took us. And my mom and my dad were separated before, by then. So. So then from there, you went into foster care, a couple of different foster homes? Yeah, at least two or three foster homes, maybe more. I can't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> Did you ever have any contact with your biological mom and dad after you were taken away from them? Um, Right after we was taken away from them for, uh, I don't know, maybe a month or two, maybe a little longer, I don't know. We ha I had visits with my mom. She was in some kind of rehab program or something. But eventually, for I don't know what reason, that was stopped. And uh, for at least nine, ten years, we didn't, hadn't seen uh, our real mom or our real dad or had any contact with them in any sort of way, you know what I mean? So we was pretty secluded and kept from them. And they both reached me in county when they saw my information on uh, TV, you know what I mean? They both sit there and uh, wrote me and called me and stuff like that, or gave me their number and I called them. Really? Yeah. So what did they say? How did that go? Uh, it was, uh, I first received a letter from my dad and, you know what I mean, at first I had to look at the name two or three times because my dad's got my same name as me. 
and I had to see it. I didn't know what, you know what I mean? And uh, that was a pretty moving moment for me because I hadn't heard from him for a while. And uh, he was just asking, you know, pretty much for forgiveness and telling me what happened and stuff. And uh, then I got a letter from my mom next. And she was sitting there asking me for forgiveness and stuff and that she had a lot of her own demons to take care of, you know what I mean? Drugs and stuff she had to fight. And uh, so I believe they was both in prison, I'm not sure, at some time over things that happened. But uh, Do you think they feel responsible for where you are now? Um, I'm sure they do blame themselves, but, you know, I don't see it as that way. I see it was my own mistakes and stuff. I could have had any kind of life I wanted to live out there, and I chose to go, you know what I mean, drink and stuff like that, so. Do you remember your time in the child welfare system very vividly, or is that a distant memory? Uh, it's more of a blurry, distant memory, you know what I mean? Uh, I remember, like, some kind of building or something that we'd sit there and go and we'd talk with counselors and stuff, and then they'd put us through, like, we'd stay with a temporary home until they matched us up with a foster family we could go stay with. And uh, we, I think we transported to two or three, maybe four uh, foster families at the time. And were you all always together, the three of you always yes. went to the same foster family? Yes, we was always stuck together, which I'm, you know, grateful for and stuff. Do you feel like you m missed out on a childhood because of all that? Do you ever think about that? Um, yeah, I'd say I had a different childhood than a lot of kids, and, uh, yeah, I feel like I missed out a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like, you know, going to friends' houses and stuff and just everything a kid does. But uh, I've always had my brother and sister there with me, you know what I mean? So that's been a little bit easier. How's your sister been through all of this? Um, I'm sure she is pretty shaken. She didn't tell me, but she's writing me and stuff, you know what I mean? Being supportive and stuff. She's, uh, she just turned 18 not too long ago, you know what I mean? So she's uh, doing good. So she's not in the, in the system at all? No. She's never been in trouble uh, with the uh, justice system in any way. So if you had to describe to people who might be watching this um, how you get through a day in adult prison when you're 17 and you know you still have a long time ahead to serve, what would you tell them? How do you get through? I'd say just uh, have a hope, you know what I mean, and keep pushing forward towards that hope. Like you could always better yourself within the facility and uh, always get yourself out. You just have to study and, you know what I mean, get your education and stuff and just don't give up that hope, you know what I mean? Just go day to day. What would you want to say to any judges that a big part of what we're doing with this show is looking at the issue of teenagers being sentenced as adults and being placed in adult correctional facilities? What would you want judges to know about the reality of what their sentencing means to kids like you? Um, well, I'd say uh, that they should take into consideration more the background of a child, a, a child's childhood, you know what I mean? Take that more into consideration stuff before they give a sentence or wave to an adult system. And uh, also that, uh, you know, I mean, I don't believe prison systems are a place for children that they would not be more uh, liable, able, let's see, liable to uh, rehabilitate themselves because there's a lot more negative influence in here among the inmates themselves and stuff. If you could talk to uh, decision makers and politicians and um, people in the legal system, can you think of anything that you would think would work, that, you know, that could be, um, instead of sentencing a kid to adult prison, you know, why don't you do this with teenagers who get in trouble or who have these offenses? Um, I don't know. I don't know, I think there should be, you know, boys' school, I'm not, I've never been to one, so I don't know how that runs. But uh, depending on the offense and stuff, you know, instead of like simple drug charge or something, they need to be rehabilitated into maybe a, some kind of rehab or something, or they just need to be talked to by counselors or something. And they need to be given more attention 
because I'm sure a lot of children become mixed up in the criminal activities from not giving it, being given enough attention by parents or their peers or, you know, just counselors or outside influence. I've got the other uh, read in here. Okay. I, I. I was about to say when he was looking up in there, I was thinking, man, is he getting underestimated? <laughs> so you know, he, he does have a microphone to put on him. Right. It's okay with this one. Okay. Go ahead and straight down. Do it. Through before they visit. What we'll soon do as soon as we're uh, done, just we'll strip them down. All right, thank we'll, you. Uh, search them, see if they have anything. And then once we search them, they'll get dressed, and then we'll we'll call them in to go in to, for the visit room to have their interview. So what do you been doing? You plan on get you already got your GD or are you still in school plan on getting it? Uh they tell me as of right now. I was old enough, I bet. I got high enough scores to get it, but How old I you gotta to wait to I gotta be seventeen to get it. Still yeah. another year and like five months or some shit. So they just have you in school still studying and stuff? Uh yeah. They got me studying out of G D books and shit. Yeah. Still got those cricket ass glasses on. Yeah. I got a pair of golden frames back. 
Yeah. I might. No. I might. No. Anyways, uh. Figure something out. What's up with the, uh. What's up with you to write music? What kind of music you write? Uh, a little bit. Mainly just country and rock. Mm -hmm. Been playing guitar and lifting weights in the gym and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even know none of the tune, none of the notes, and I still play better than everybody in that motherfucker. Nah. Just started working out again, though. Yeah. I, I just started writing music again too. It's been about, mm -hmm. and it's eight, nine months since I wrote any music class. So they what they asked you in your interview yesterday? Uh just asking about what it's like and hearing all that good stuff and Not uh right. how'd I meet my cell and stuff, which of course I met him in Seg. Selling? Yeah, we he's already eighteen. But, they moved him back till he gets his GED. Mm -hmm. We both just did eight months over in SEG together. They moved us both over here together. Does that uh, child advocate or whatever he is still write you? Who's Steven? that? Yeah, he's still writing. Yeah, I've received a couple letters from him. I'm still waiting for a response from him. Yeah, he, he, might, he, he don't ever. I get letter from him at least twice a week. I ain't okay. been over. I ain't wrote nobody, nobody since I've been out saying. I wrote my lawyers like twice. Other than that, I ain't wrote nobody. Yeah. I thought I figured I wrote so much in say I would just take a little break off it for a minute. Mm -hmm. I write some letters probably next week or so though. Yeah. Hmm. So uh. Yeah, what else can we say? So, what, what you been watching on TV? Watching shows? Uh, or? Well, as of right now, my TV's offhand. It's, okay. uh. All right, all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I got an air one coming next month, though. One of the flat screens. Mm -hmm. It's already been ordered and shit, and just waiting for it to come in. Mm -hmm. That's good. I just got rid of it last week. Well, anyways, uh, so, what do you think about this whole place? <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's kind of, ain't shit to do. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of time. <laughs> time would be going by slow in here for you, too? Uh, not really, man. Anything goes by pretty fast? It goes pretty smooth. I mean, these two years flew by, man. I mean, at time when you're doing it, yeah, it feels slow as fuck. But when you look back, damn, already two years? Mm. And they're about, what is it, two years, four months now? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Two years, three months, I think. Got locked up it's... January, beginning of January, 09. Yeah. All I know it's been, uh, <laughs> to me, it seems like every Two days, well, like one day or whatever. Every three or four days, one day. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, hey, you, you, know, you ain't end up gonna do that 30. Stay mm -hmm. clear of conduct in your education. You're gonna modify it. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. First charge ever. I plan on uh, getting my uh, GED and hopefully getting as many college degrees as I get, maybe. I don't know, whatever. They have a bachelor's, master's, or whatever. Uh, yeah, I still I trouble, of course. <laughs> Keep getting well, in trouble for stupid little stuff. Other than those little, don't. They, they created their own problems, man. Why was it? How are they gonna send them up like that? Oh, that's good to see you. Yeah. Okay, having an encounter again. Yeah, I'm gonna stay on getting there, bit. Make sure you stay out of trouble. I'll help you see you over on all three sides, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Hope we see you on the out. Yeah, 
Hope you, uh, hope you stay well, okay? Yeah. Got you. Love you too. Yeah. Got you. My mom said hi, right? Yeah. Alright. Come on up, you Sharky. Yep. Yeah. Did you sign anything or anything? Yep. 